Roland Willett's All Men Stories. Here with friend and neighbor, Eric Holton. Roland Willett's All Men Stories. Welcome. Today, we have Eric Holton. And Eric, you're a doctor, right? I am. And you're not a D.O. like your brother. No, no, no. You're an you're a, you uh, M.D.? Yeah, I'm an M.D. Oh, i got to write this down. i got to yeah. log this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. M.D. University of Minnesota. Oh, okay. You yeah. come, huh? Mm -hmm. oh. That's right. Yeah. I'll right down the road from you at St. Thomas. Yeah, yeah 87 to 91. Wow. Yeah, a lot of students from St. Thomas in school with me. Oh. You know, only five. Yeah, mm -hmm. only five from Concordia there. But, uh, in Moorhead. But, uh, yeah, a lot from St. Thomas, U of M, St. Olaf, St. John's, the majority of them. St. John's or, or uh, U of M. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were we were talking. You right now you're you 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 you're actually up at the administrative area, right? You get to go to a bunch of meetings. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Over at the VA. Right. Mm-hmm. This is a big week. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. He gets to go to a bunch of meetings. Right. So yeah. Being a big week means you go to a bunch of meetings uh -huh. with all kinds of special doctors. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> who have, who every one of them has all the answers. That's right. <laughs> and he has to figure, <laughs> he has to work his way through getting an answer. <laughs> that works. <laughs> they're, they're all leaders in their area. <laughs> <That's right>. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I bet that's fun. That is fun. Yeah, I do enjoy. Uh, I enjoy just as much afterwards uh, going to downtown Minneapolis to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse to eat. Oh wow, <laughs> that's good. I thought you. Were, I thought you were in, you. You mean you're up here and you go all the way down to Minneapolis oh, yeah, to have, yeah. a, have a, yeah. after the meetings? No, no, no. That's where you go down. To all the meetings. the meetings are in Minneapolis. Oh, okay. All yes. the big VA for the for that's the, right. They're, they're down there. Oh. Yeah, because all the leaders then congregate in the central uh, district, which for our area is uh, Iowa, um, uh, Nebraska, eastern Nebraska, uh, all of North Dakota, and all of Minnesota. So Minneapolis would be the central point. Oh, cool. At least it has the most oh, facilities. Yeah. Than Chicago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is definitely better. Definitely a, a drive. You can leave at 3 and be home in time for for uh, for dinner. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. But we were, we were going, we were going to younger times where we were saying, what's a cool story? Mm-hmm. And this was a younger journey and yeah. it was, it was mm -hmm. heading west from here. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was where? Well, we, uh, I was going to work in Glacier National Park. Oh. And um, since our college got out first of May, uh, they said, come out as soon as you can because I'm six foot eight and they wanted me to clean all the rafters and all the dirt from this <laughs> hotel that had been closed all winter. East Glacier Park Lodge. Right? And they don't, they don't want uh, uh, they don't want people in college age out there with cars too many uh, drinking and driving off the cliffs in, in Glacier National Park. So you had to have a family member, member bring you out. Yeah. And so that's where you, your uncle joined? That's right. That's right. He knew a guy in uh, started with a P in Montana, somewhere by Missoula. Kind of blank on the name. He went to UND with him. Right. So he says, well, I'm going to go and visit him. I hadn't seen him since the 40s, before the war. So I'm going to go, go see him, and then we'll drive together and I'll dump you off uh, at Glacier. Oh, okay. It's a little, it's a two different sides of the state. Way on the north and way on the right. south. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we went... Uh, uh, west to Glendive, and that was 87, and they just did the, no, it was 85, it was 85, so we Glendive, then up through Haver, and stayed overnight in Haver, and all we would do, see, the good thing about that is my parents would never eat at, you know, all these cheeseburger joints and fattening joints, well, <laughs> so that's all I wanted to do, was <laughs> eat at truck stops, and eat cheeseburgers, uh, french fries, uh, and, and malts. Then, and then, the, uh, I don't know if I had any beer back then, I was 20, probably so. Uh, but uh, so we would eat, and we'd eat, and he'd eat, and he'd eat, and I'd eat. It was great. It was some 
great eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what you and how was Glacier? Great Glacier was cold. If you get there the first of May. Oh, it is cold. It was cold then. Uh, the going to the Sun Highway is closed as uh, far east as St. Mary's on the east side uh, because there's so much snow. So you were kind of confined to the town of East Glacier Park, and uh, so it, it and of course it was just empty there. And the, the, the hotel didn't open until probably the third or fourth week of May. So it was just like that Jack Nicholson movie, The Shining. You ever seen that hotel? <laughs> yeah. I was in there all by myself. Oh, sometimes. they didn't have what you didn't have much of other students. No, no, not that. Was other tall people? No, no. I was a, I was the about one of uh, maybe three or four employees there. The other ones were full time year round people oh. you know, that kept it open and, and did maintenance in the winter time, kept the riffraff out, I guess, and. Uh, you know, made sure the pipes didn't freeze in January. So then I, I was the first of the summer help to show up. I so they kept you busy, didn't they? Yeah, they did. There was a lot to do. I went around then to, as soon as the snow melted off, I went around and uh, uh, they would say, okay, you're so tall, you're going to take these smoke detectors off the ceilings. So I went <laughs> to, up to East Glacier Park, I went to Mini Glacier, and I took off every single smoke detector and replaced Replace them. The yeah. Batteries, yeah. Yeah. Replace the batteries, replace the smoke detectors, half of them were broken, busted up. And so I made it safe in there for everybody. And then back then, you would take these uh, cans of uh, fire extinguishers, fill them up with water, and pressurize them with a pressure hose. That was right. the fire extinguisher, <laughs> uh, just pressurized water. So I would fill that, and I'd walk up and down stairs and put these uh, fire canisters in all the hotels at Mini Glacier, uh, East Glacier Park Lodge, and then I'd go around to Lake McDonald on the west side of the park. So I'd drive around. I was kind of like. Was uh, the view? The view was great that time of year. It was so quiet, a lot of uh, a lot of snow. You know, and then as the snow would melt, then we'd start working up our way up the mountain, up to uh, up to Waterton in National Park in the Prince of Wales Hotel, and then uh, um, a couple of campgrounds around in the park that were run by the park that were, right. you know, a concession now to private uh, companies that they would take care of it. Uh, but then we started. Uh, then then we started going back and forth on going to the Sun Highway when that opened. June and uh, getting to the uh, west side of the park, Lake McDonald. Um, and then, uh, so I've gone back there three or four times with my family and uh, taken them on the, on the hikes that we used to do. Oh, wow. Did you just hike? Yeah. Did yeah. oh, you, yeah, we you ski before it uh, No, no, didn't ski at all. Didn't, uh, didn't ski at all. It really wasn't very good. You know, it was so rocky. You know, in, in it May, is there. Yeah, it was very rocky and, and you know, it, wasn't, it wouldn't be good it's skiing. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Does yeah, this scenic we would see uh, we would see bear all the time. There was a train that derailed, spilled full of corn and everything, and we used to go see it. And then the uh, the bears would come eat the corn that was rotting, and uh, then they you know, they'd, they'd eat that. And I think they'd get drunk because it was uh, it was alcohol, corn alcohol, you know. So they would stumble around. And, uh, <laughs> that was that was fun to watch the bears do that, but. Uh, then we go play basketball. It's on the Indian reservation, so we go play basketball right. and running. Uh, so that's another was, thing. Was it Blackfoot up there? Yep, the Blackfoot Indian Reservation. Yeah, is all along the east edge of the park, and uh, they used to like, go and try to try to get them into the park, but they don't want to be. You know, their ancestors would tell them, you know, that's where the bear lives, and the, you know, and that's where you'll get hurt. So they don't want to go into the park at all. Oh, okay. So they're trying to get them uh, to to be more of a part of the park. So they pretty much stay to the east side of the park. We used oh, okay. to go play basketball. Uh, at with, their, yeah, yeah at, at their high school in yeah. Browning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have good memories of that summer uh, to uh, all the glacier. My job uh, then, once I uh, uh, cleaned all the high railings and ripped out all the smoke detectors and made sure everything was was to go with, because the glacier park was started by the train uh, by the railroad uh, because they wanted people to take the railroad out and then stay in the park. So all these old uh, parks were built in the early 1900s by the railroad. Yeah, and so uh, the, the, the railroad goes right up to East Glacier Park. Wasn't it Teddy Roosevelt that uh, made it a park? Yes, I believe that was uh, Teddy Roosevelt who made that. Uh, the. I think that's the, the second oldest park 
I think Yellowstone is the oldest uh, park system in Montana, uh -huh. and Glacier is second. So then when, about 1st of June then, after I'd done all the firework, at 1st of June, customers would, would take the train in. So I'd drive a truck over there, and we'd pick up their luggage, and then we'd truck it back to the lodge for them, you know. And then we'd carry it to their room, and take our hand out like that, hoping they'd give us a little sum, give us a buck. <laughs> a buck was a lot of money. A buck was a lot of money, 1985, yeah. Oh, so.
drugs that way, prescribe their medicines for their blood pressure, their diabetes, cholesterol, uh -huh. then, uh, then you know, all done electronically, no travel, nothing like that. Travel is that very is sure nice. That so, is one yeah. of, that's mm -hmm. where technology is yeah. so it's, it's so nice. It, 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 the vets, they appreciate that. They think that yeah. they're happy to get the, the care they need. You know, I'm, waiting, yeah, I'm waiting for you to put one in, in here in my, in my sure. cabin. So mm -hmm. I don't have yeah. to go down to the, the VA office for it. Oh, yeah. And even, especially more, even more remote areas in North Dakota, you know, they, they you know, Areas that are hard to, to drive in the wintertime in Wyoming and South Dakota, they use this a lot. Oh, um, nice. And so it's really nice to, you know, they just have a small little town with a little clinic that they can just check them in. And then we navigate, we get, you control the, you know, a lot from the, the sounds of the stethoscope with your computer and everything. And you're sitting there 100 to 1,000 miles away, depending on, uh, you know. That is so, awesome. Yeah. Awesome gift to, yeah. Awesome gift to mm -hmm. people out there. In the yeah, that's exactly right. And they don't like, they're kind of rural. They don't like traveling in. Yeah, they I like mean, to stay yeah, in. The, nice they don't like going to the town of a couple hundred, you know, yeah, because they right. go shopping there. But to go drive to uh, Fargo Moorhead for everything. Right? Yeah, go to big crazy. Yeah, yeah, go to big town. Go to the big town, yeah. There's some things you can't do. You know, they have to screen them, you know. Yeah, I mean, if they, have, if they have a problem, they yeah. get yeah. Yeah, they, they, they get screened. Yeah, right, but yeah. most of the stuff we do in, in medicine, internal medicine now, uh, can be done uh, by a video called VTEL, the voice telephone. Right. I think it's carried over the telephone wire system. I don't know how it's transmitted, but it's called VTEL. Right. And uh, most of what we can do that way, uh, acute injuries, fractures, they still go to the local emergency room then. Cool. And, uh, and so, but the vast majority of, uh, of medical problems can be treated this way. Wow. So that's what I, I've taken my leadership and, 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 and going into this, doing an entirely electronic interaction with the patient. That's awesome. Yeah, it really okay, is. Okay, we're going to say, I'm going to say, roll and roll, it's all my stories, okay? And you're going to okay. say, Eric Holton, all my stories. Okay. Roll and roll, it's all my stories. Eric Holton, Old Men's Stories. And he's Old Man. I am. Especially for his kids. <laughs> old Men's Stories. One more day. Here on Lizzie with friends.